Every day, new attractions appear on the tourist map of Moscow. Today, more Russians are traveling inside their own country. Due to the development of new tourist services, each journey has become much more rewarding and interesting. This is the program Capital Ideas Life, and I'm its host, Mike Gibson. Today on the program, discovering Moscow in a new way with the Moscow government's City of Discovery project. The House of Culture GES2, how an old power plant has evolved into Moscow's most popular art space. Traveling with just a few clicks, how the new digital tourist service Ruspass works. The City of Discoveries is the name of a new educational tourism project that has been developed by the Tourism Committee of Moscow. These are eight unique routes that follow a professional direction for school children and teenagers. Let's find out how it works. It's time to discover Moscow. Previously, the concept of tourism meant visiting iconic and popular cultural sites of the Russian capital. Now, that means exploring much more than museums, as a variety of organizations open their doors to all who want to visit, especially young travelers. Among these organizations are high-tech companies, innovative startups, universities, tech centers, and cultural institutions. The City of Discovery project is an entirely new format of educational tourism in Moscow. The uniqueness of the project is in its educational methodology. We've combined two sectors, education and tourism, and today we are developing educational tourism in the capital. The whole city of Moscow acts as a single educational landscape, as a living system of industries, professionals and associations. The City of Discovery project allows not only Moscow school children, but also children from other Russian regions to see the capital of their homeland from an unusual perspective. In fact, every school child can now be an explorer of Moscow, learning about a real live city outside of textbooks and school classrooms, and perhaps in the future, build their careers in the best city on earth. We're using the most modern methods to interact with Gen Z. This is a very specific audience that cannot imagine themselves without the Internet. This is the digital generation. We teach children the skills of the 21st century, working in the face of uncertainty, multiculturalism, teamwork and other skills. The project has developed eight tourist educational tracks in eight specializations. These are innovative industries which are already actively engaged in developing professions in the fields of the future. Energy, digital technology, telecommunications, transportation, space and so on. Teenagers can choose one of the tracks on the project website and submit an application to participate. Throughout this educational journey, children are accompanied by trained curator guides. These are special mentors who have been trained and know the scenarios for visiting Moscow sites. They know the educational outcomes and what should be achieved in the end. They know how to conduct project-based research activities. And so, when children finish the trip, they go home and design a project where they perform research on creating a city of the future in their region. Today, the City of Discovery project partners are made up of nearly 100 different sites in Moscow. Each of the project's eight industries is studied by participants through snapshots in time, from the past to the future. For example, as part of the Creative Industries track, they visit the Soyuz Multfilm movie studio, where they learn about the history of this classic industry site. Then, the group moves to the present day, for example, to the Garage Museum of Contemporary Art. Finally, the participants discover the innovations of the future at the Tumo International School of Creative Technologies.
I'm sure that every adult and child dreams of coming here on an excursion. We are now at the animation studios of Soyuz Milk Film. Many world famous cartoons were created here, including Hedgehog in a Fog in Chiburashka and Crocodile Gienna, as well as many others. The Soviet and Russian state movie studio Soyuz Milk Film was founded in 1936. For more than 85 years of its existence, over one and a half thousand cartoons in a variety of genres and artistic styles have been produced here. Famous directors and animators of Soyuz Milk Film made puppets, molded characters from plasticine, drew and brought them to life on the screen. At the Soyuz Milk Film Museum, you can learn how these widely loved animation films were created, what techniques were used to bring them to life, and visit the role of an animator yourself. Here we see, among other things, how animation began, with optical illusions like this, like with a phenakistoscope. If you look through the opening, you can see the character's movement. There's a special panel right there, because you can't just tell a modern child how movies were made in the 20th century. And here it is. This is made frame by frame? Yes, 24 frames per second. It's a little snippet of the movie Tale of Tales. People come in and say, wow, that's a lot of film. I say no, one meter of film is just two seconds of material. Soyuz Milk Film's first films were practically all short films. Characters were drawn in the Disney manner, but soon the studio had its own style. You see, there's a hard outline around the character, and there's a smooth fill inside, so stylistically it's not Disney at all. It's essentially an experiment in its own right. Now, most of the animated films in the studio are produced with the help of computer technology. However, traditional animation methods of the past have not been forgotten here. In one of Soyuz Milk Film Studios, where ordinary visitors are not allowed, a real puppet cartoon is being made. And our crew was able to watch this process, just like the participants of the City of Discovery project. It looks like a movie set. Scenery, characters, cameras, lights. It's all natural, but it moves frame by frame. And mastery of that skill is key for an artist working in puppet animation. Using the same technology, the famous animated film Hofmaniada was created here, the first full-length film of the studio in the last 30 years. All of its characters were created and animated by hand, frame by frame. The film crew spent 17 years creating this work. And now I'm going to try to master the profession of an animator. In order to bring the little balloon to life on the screen, our presenter in a special computer program uses the techniques of shifting, also called stop motion. Here we have just plain paper. Here we have a cut-out balloon. There's a camera hanging on top that captures all the movement. We have the ball going down. We need to move it a little bit. That's right. We take a picture again. You can go on and do it yourself. As the ball falls down, it looks like it's speeding up and it appears to be stretching. So step by step, changing the position of the ball we created our own cartoon. Uh, okay, good. Wow. And the participants of the City of Discovery project can experience themselves not only as an animator, but also as a cartoon character at the new interactive platform of the film studio Soyuz Milk Park. Oh, such familiar characters. In this pavilion, adults and children can immerse themselves in the world of animation with the help of modern technologies. For example, here you can have a bath in paint. Or create music for cartoons. A 
Everything here is made to be fun. It's all about emotion. But it's extremely important to us that today's children experience animation not just as entertainment, but also as a creative profession, perhaps in their own future. And participation in a project like City of Discovery, for us, is an opportunity not only to introduce children to our characters, but also encourage their creativity. Here you can also animate a beloved cartoon character and feel like a real cartoonist. I'm feeling very inspired. What a great process. You might find yourself inside a cartoon. There are 18 interactive attractions in the pavilion. Oh, well that was the rabbit hole. Ah, we had tea with the rabbit. Ah. Hedgehog in a Fog is my favorite cartoon. It's so touching. And now we're going to help the hedgehog find his way home. Here it was important for us to create a space where children and parents could be inside these movies together and experience the same feelings. So we gave the classic characters a new form, a new life. It is not only participants in the City of Discovery project who can visit places like Soyuz Milk Film. Any tourist in Moscow can book an authentic childhood excursion or choose other interesting sites here. To find out about the most interesting places in Moscow or to plan your trip to Russia, just go to the application made by the Moscow Travel Service, Ruspass. Here you can book a hotel, buy tickets, choose excursions and even book a table in a restaurant. And there's lots of really useful information for tourists. The Rus Pass service is another innovative project of the Moscow City Tourism Committee. It is a whole portal of travel ideas right on your phone. The digital service Rus Pass is your personal assistant when it comes to organizing your trip around Russia. It's a single app, one place where you can assemble your entire Russian trip, no matter which region you're going to. Moscow, St. Petersburg, Yekaterinburg, Sochi, you can find exactly what you need. To plan a trip, you had to go to at least 10 sites. First, you would go to one site to look at tickets, another to look at hotels, and a third to look at what you wanted to see. Now, with the Ruspass service, this is all in one place. The Tourism Committee developed the service jointly with the Information Technology Department of the Moscow City Government. Currently, Ruspass is available in Russian, English and Spanish. Since its launch, the application has been accessed by more than 2 million users. We are now implementing a new type of travel, interregional itineraries is what we're calling them. We've developed several offers where a tourist, for example, can start his journey on a Friday in Moscow. After having a walk around Moscow on Saturday morning or Friday evening, our tourist takes the train to the nearest regional destination, for example, to Tula. Stay in Tula, take a day to see the sights in Tula, and then on Saturday or Sunday, drive to the next station, to Oryol. Look around, have a walk in Oryol, and return by train to Moscow. Moreover, the service is open not only to travelers, but also to travel companies who are partners of this project. Cooperative agreements with the digital travel service have been signed by all regions of Russia. We also have many offers, excursions from certified guides who will give you an individual tour of a city or the area. There are more than 3,000 of these types of offers. The places that are offered to the participants of the Educational Tourist Project, City of Discovery, can also be found on the Rus Pass service and can be planned as a separate visit or with a personal guide. The Pushkin Museum is one of the most famous and beautiful museums of the Russian capital. I always come here with great pleasure. This museum quarter is one of the partners of the City of Discoveries project. The Pushkin State Museum of Fine Arts is one of the largest collections of foreign arts in Russia. 
containing works from ancient times to the present day. This year, the museum celebrates its 110th anniversary. We now call it the Museum District. When the creator of our museum, Ivan Tsvetaev, formulated his conception of the museum's future, he said that one day he would grow a museum town, as he said, on this spot. We have two open buildings, one dedicated to pre-19th century art and the other to the art of the 19th and 20th centuries. And there's a museum town being built around it. Once inside, it's obvious this museum really isn't like other classic museums. Here, for example, is the Italian courtyard. There is no traditional parquet, nor paintings on the walls. The room reproduces the famous Florence courtyard, the Palazzo del Bargello, in a free-spirited manner. It's such a special place, because there is no point on earth other than at the Pushkin Museum, where these three works of art are side by side. Michelangelo's David is located in Florence. One of these two huge horsemen, they're called Condottieri, is in Venice, the other in Padua. You understand, of course, that this is some geographical distance, and only in our museum can you see them at the same time. They are exact replicas. The Italian courtyard seems to prepare visitors for one of the museum's further exhibitions, the sculptures of the Italian Renaissance, which are exhibited in a collection of casts of the museum. Indeed, when we get here, we don't feel the same way as, for example, somewhere behind the columns, or as in the Greek courtyard. And so, moving through the museum, a visitor feels like he is moving through time and space, like a time machine almost. It still makes quite an impression today. And I like to imagine myself as a person who came to the museum in 1912, who had not seen any of this on television. And what an impression it must have made then. The Pushkin Museum's exhibitions are constantly being updated. For example, now, for the first time ever, there is a full-scale exhibition devoted to the mummies of ancient Egypt. Visitors can see more than 400 artifacts, most of which had previously been available only to specialists. The exhibition is the result of a joint research project of the Pushkin Museum and the Kerchatov Institute Research Center. I think it's a perfect example for an exhibition suitable for all ages. For many people, it's a place to see the Egyptian collection. When children start studying the history of the ancient world in the fifth grade, well, I think most fifth graders in Moscow come to our museum. But the Pushkin Museum is not just a place to contemplate works of art. All the necessary prerequisites have been established here for children to gain invaluable experience and knowledge about the museum's work. A museum is really a model of the professional world, and City of Discovery is a project which is tasked with showing how the professional adult world works, giving young people an idea of a profession outside the school system of subjects. And so, we have prepared a program where kids can feel like sociologists by studying the museum audience, try to understand how museum marketing works, what needs to be done for a visitor to see a museum in a new way and want to come there. So this is a very important project for us. There is a separate program at the Pushkin Museum that has been created especially for young people. It includes master classes, a research laboratory, a lecture space, and even a co-working space. It's a beautiful place. It might be a little hard to find because it's hidden behind the main museum building. In fact, this building is an old manor house, which early on was turned into the children's center of the Pushkin Museum. And now our youth space is also located here. Here you can do your homework, do your own thing. We have several rooms with computers to work on. You can work with media projectors, for example. There are also quite a few different classes, most of which are free. We read some medieval texts together and see what they look like in modern literature and how they relate to the visual arts. And a lot of the kids suggest projects that we would be interested in working on. And once a month, students can become real tour guides for a whole day as part of the project. I'll show you the museum. 
It's a day when the museum is run by high school students. They present what they love about the museum, and we give them an opportunity to talk about the museum as they see it. I think it's useful not only for kids who are 16, but for adults as well, to see something they've seen many times in a different way. And we continue to discover the best city on Earth from new angles. In front of us now is the completely new and utterly unique space in the centre of Moscow, the House of Culture Guest Dva. And together with you, I'm going to be visiting this place for the first time. Now it's hard to believe that once upon a time this place was an industrial building one of the capital's oldest power plants. Now it is probably the most fashionable art space in Moscow. And it's also a place where participants in the City of Discovery project can learn how modern cultural institutions of the capital work. It's a building with a history. It's been here for over a hundred years. One hundred years ago, it was built by the Moscow architect Vasily Bashkirov. And now, where we are, this super-luminous space is a project by the world-famous Italian architect Renzo Piano. He was actively involved in the reconstruction of this project. In collaboration with his bureau, Renzo Piano Building Workshop, and the design bureau Apex. The restoration of Gezdva was the largest project to transform a former industrial building into an open cultural space that has been implemented in the world in recent years. The restoration work lasted for five years. On the one hand, we tried to retain details from the previous building, and on the other hand, to give it a completely new filling, a new interior, in order to make it really like a modern house of culture. You don't have to be an artist, a writer or a professional musician to get in here. Every guest can contribute to the development of modern culture. There are carpenters, locksmiths and ceramic workshops for both professionals and beginners. There is also a film studio. The House of Culture, Gestva, cooperates with Russian and Moscow schools and universities. And of course, Gestva is a partner of the educational and tourist program City of Discovery of the Moscow Tourism Committee. As part of one of the educational tracks of the program, children are bound to visit this amazing cultural space in the heart of the Russian capital. Now we have classes in architecture and ecology for school children of all ages from elementary, middle, to high school. The purpose of these classes is to get to know the building, first off, because, more often than not, it's the first visit for students to a space that has just opened. We talk about the history, the architecture of GES2. We perform special tasks together, which are prepared by architects and methodologists for our classes. The atelier is especially popular with students and even adults. This is a playground where you can try to make something with your own hands or with the help of curators. But most importantly, get new skills in any field, whether it is ecology or urbanism, transport or space. In each of these areas, participants of the City of Discovery project can not only just be listeners, they become active participants in the process, discovering Moscow and the world of professions of the future. We have everything divided into four zones. There's the wood zone, there's the paper zone, the clay zone and the fabric zone. There are facilitators, that's us. We help you navigate the space. We tell you where you can get what materials, what you can do with them. Also, we have guest masters in every zone. They talk about crafts and techniques. We also have guest artists. We have master classes with them. In short, Gestvar is not just a new fashionable space in the center of Moscow, it is a real center for multicultural ideas and initiatives, combining exhibition halls, a library, a cinema, and a concert hall, 
workshops, studios, and artists' residencies. Stores, a restaurant, a canteen and cafe, a playground, and auditoriums for public events. Visitors to Gezdvar don't just study works of art and their history here, but become equal creators of art and get involved in the contemporary cultural process. And this means that any Muscovite or guest of the capital city can come here and become a co-author of a new work of contemporary art in all its diversity. Moscow really is a city of discoveries. And in the next issues, we will continue to introduce you to the most interesting places in the best city on earth. You've been watching Mike Gibson. See you in the next programme.